Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. I just wanted to share some good news that's now out there, and a lot of people wouldn't have heard this, but this applies to all tradespeople and all industries that they have school, sorry, school shortages, school teachers and people along those lines. So it applies to tradies, which includes locksmiths, so I just thought I'd put the news out there because a lot of people probably won't know this or didn't hear it or didn't know how it applies to you. So let's get into it. Australia is basically you know, we're an island and we've got all these different states all the way around here. Queensland, Northern Territory, WA, South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania and of course ACT. So basically it's broken up into all these different sections which means New South Wales has its own security licensing, WA has its own, Northern Territory, South Australia, you get the picture. So what's been happening is if you had a New South Wales license and let's say that you also operated a business or a different franchise or you did part-time work in Queensland on a big project you have or vice versa or perhaps you just want to fly over to WA and um, do the dash for cash and work in the mines and uh, use your trade over there you would actually be required to get a separate uh, security license and if you're running a business a separate master's license both of which can be very expensive so if you've got multiple states and multiple licenses they can add up to quite a lot of money. So what the government um, basically has decided to do is try and make this a little bit easier for us. Let's just have a quick little look in New South Wales here what type of fees we're looking at. So for class one, class two license, um, you know, one year or five years, you know, five, six hundred bucks. If you're going to be operating a business, you need a master's license. If you have more people than just yourself, you actually need to, um, you know, pay for them as well. So up to three people, five years, another sixteen hundred dollars. So money, money, money. Throw lots of money at it. <coughs> now let's have a look at Queensland. Um, if you're a first timer, then you've got to do the fingerprints, criminal history check. If you're just renewing, then you'll probably be up for the same old fees. One, uh, one year, three years. These are some big figures here. Uh, class 2 license and so on and so forth. There's a couple of different types of class of license there too. I believe it's personal and business. So you can see that these figures, they add up quite a bit. If The more states you got, the more it's going to cost you. Let's look at Victoria now. So that's pretty much half of Australia sort of covered there. And you can see the figures once again. They're not cheap. They really do add up. Uh, for one of the other states, Northern Territory, I did find some fees. They're looking pretty much similar. Just similar three to five hundred bucks you want to run a you know individual partnership sort of business more money more money run a business more money 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 and what was this Tasmania so there you go more fees for Tasmania as well each and every state had more more um, licensing so if you decided to basically go from one to the other or you wanted to see change or something along those lines you better pull out your wallet because they want your money each and every time so that's uh, that's one problem okay so now the state the state government has removed the boundaries. So let's just look at this. Tradespeople, property agents, hairdressers, teachers, and hundreds of other vocational workers should should soon be able to cross the state borders and work with minimum fuss. So this will implement from January the 1st, 2021. And uh, you know, they're mentioning the pandemic and all this. So there's a bit of a skill shortage going on. You see COVID-19, this is designed to make it cheaper and easier for skilled people to go over into different borders so uh, that how do you say the skills skilled people can be shared around the country which is good because uh, we have a shortage of you know locksmiths in New South Wales there's not a lot of us and um, other places would have a shortage too I believe WA has a bit of a shortage too it's hard to find people to go working on, on a hot climate so this is really um, it'll open some doors for a lot of people it'll reduce a lot of money that is being paid and it will it, it will be a good thing. The only thing that I don't like about this whole scheme, and you can leave a comment down below, is that the criteria to be a locksmith and the training courses are different in each state. I was just sort of trying to look up Victoria here, and I was going through all the um, what they're actually asking for. And this is how it used to be in New South Wales. They used to say, right, you have a certificate in this and this and this and this, and you select all the certificates you basically have, and then you go through and you know make sure that you can do all those things and then you pay your fees so that's the fees for applying for a license in um, where was this this was uh, South Australia so I can see that they're doing the right thing making sure that everyone's qualified uh, this is TAFE New South Wales I couldn't bring up the figures but there's basically 25 modules you have to complete and um, yeah it's not basically over the overnight it's not one year it's not a book um, it's 25 modules to actually be able to get the certificate so that you can apply. That was the way it was. Now, you don't need any certificate. 
You don't need any certificate whatsoever. So where South Australia is doing the right thing, New South Wales is not doing the right thing. So it means people can come to New South Wales, get a certificate, and then go back into whichever state they couldn't get the certificate in and have a certificate, use it, trade as a locksmith. So although they've done the border thing, which I believe is good, unless every state pulls its head in and re-implements the training requirements for locksmithing, we're still going to have big holes in our system. And it means that we're still going to get uh, scammer locksmiths, locksmiths overnight who don't know what they're doing, um, idiots running around in our industry making a fool of us. So, and I'm not talking about people from overseas, if you can come into this country and you get um, an accreditation, they've got plenty of accreditations where they just check to see that you have the necessary skills as a, as a tradesperson. Um, if they were to do that, then, then that's absolutely fine. But the thing is, if certain states have no training requirement, and the other states do, it's a, it's a huge loophole. TAFE, New South, uh, TAFE Queensland, sorry, smaller course, okay, from what I can see, and I've been told it's a smaller course, instead of having 20 books, you've only got one. So there, there once again, you could go there and do that course, it'd be a short course, and then fly over to uh, South Australia or any of the other places uh, that where it's actually harder. Okay, so where we're looking at now, training in South Wales. Uh, so where is this one for? This one is for, so I looked up all the states, some I could find, some I couldn't, but this one right here is, is not so bad as well. Uh, I wish I could find out which state this was. Um, anyway, let's look, at, let's look at their criteria. All these courses here, page two, page three okay that that's reasonable that's like what we used to have to do but um uh, states and territory government so it doesn't tell me which state that was wonder if i can go back to find it uh adelaide so that was adelaide so adelaide's doing their bit as well so that's good and basically yeah now we're opening up the borders i mean we can't even go anywhere anyway if you wanted to and they're pretty hopeful to say that they're going to open up all the borders by january 2021 but let's just see how that plays out because most likely there's a lot of problems in a lot of business, a lot of industries, a lot of trades after this uh, after this pandemic. This might help some people sort of um, move around. There's only so many locksmiths in so many places, and you know if you didn't get along with your boss or you know the you weren't looking for a, a tree change or something, at least now you can go right. Well, I'm going to fly to WA, South Australia, or Queensland, or New South Wales, and, and start again or go for a sea change. So this really does take a little bit of the stress off because now you don't have to pay thousands of dollars in licensing and you will kind of be recognised. I only hope that they change the conditions back to where you need to have a certain amount of level of expertise before you can call yourself a locksmith. Because New South Wales at the moment completely letting things down by reducing, um, you know, saying you don't need any qualifications, just pay us our money, we just want our money. What they said to me over the phone was um, SLED, Security Industry Licensing Board. They said, we are not an enforcement agency. We're just a license agency. And that, that, that's complete rubbish because they're the people who come down on you on a ton of bricks and give you $10,000 fines if you break any of the rules. They're the people who give you the license, but they're not the people that need, you know, need to check if you're actually trained or not. And on a funny note, they told me that the Master Locksmiths Association is the place that does all the checking. What a load of rubbish. Master Locksmiths Association is a bunch of locksmiths who have an association, a group, boys club. You know, they've got nothing to do with um, with checking who's licensed and who's not. They have no power. Uh, they they have nothing to do with SLED, apart from, you know, uh, contacting and things along those lines. Master Locksmith Association's been pushing for a certain level of training requirements as well. They've been pushing for it. When I spoke to them, they said, yeah, we're on to it, we've been on to it, and we're going to... We're going to, you know, we're trying to see what we can do. So that association is asking for it, uh, asking SLED to bring it back to the way it was so that we can keep our industry open and honest. Leave your opinion down below what you think. Um, did you not know about this? Is this something good for you? And uh, it might, now that you know about it, it might one of your other locky mates or so might be interested in it as well. At least now we can travel borders. The license should have been should have been carried across the whole country. Should be the same criteria for training. Should be the same license all the way across. You know, so if you lose it in one, you basically lost it in all of them, and it should be unified across, and they all should be connected. So, about time, I'd say. All right, leave your comments down below, and thanks for watching.